author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer of Author Magazine, and today I'm at the University Bookstore in Seattle, Washington with Sandra Evans, author of This Is Not a Werewolf Story. Sandra, welcome to Author. Well, thank you so much. It's such an honor to be here. I'm just thrilled. So, Sandra, you have a book. I do. You have a, not just a book, but a novel, mm -hmm. which I mention because unlike some first-time novelists, you have a background in writing but it was in academia. Right. Had fiction always been an ambition or was this one that surprised you? No, fiction, I've been trying to write since I was 10 or 11. I, that's been my lifelong dream and passion, to be honest. And I think it was just really um, self-doubt that kept me back. I tried, you know, I, when I was 22 or 23, I was living in Seattle, I was a waitress, and I thought, this is the year, I'm gonna take a year off from school, I'm gonna just work part-time, and I'm gonna write my first novel. And I did, and it was about being a waitress, <laughs> living well, on Capitol Hill. Right, what you know. <laughs> and I did, and I think actually that was part of the problem is that it was a little too close to home. And I think all the things I did early on were very close to home and kind of mimicked my own, own life maybe a little too closely for me to, to kind of really gain traction on the topic and figure out what I was writing about. But so that one, I, I, I actually sent that out. I um, sent it to about 20 editors because I didn't know anything about agents. I knew nothing about the whole process. I just honestly sat down. I lived in a little apartment um, at 15th and Pine, right next to Cadillac Grill yeah, and Thumpers. Yeah. Yeah, you were right in the heart <laughs> and I had a of view of the space. You know, it was, it was really, but I, every day I'd sit down and I'd write and I ended up with this novel and I sent it out to all these editors and they all said no except for one. Uh, the ed an editor at Soho Press mm -hmm. and she wrote back and she helped me revise it and I thought everyone I knew was like this is it you're gonna get published right. you you know you're like 24 25 and um, and I was very thrilled and I was so excited and then she said no wow. in the end she said yeah. I'm sure you can find a home for this uh, with someone else which I've, and, th and those are words that I've heard so many times yeah. um, throughout the course of my life I've always been writing fiction and after that, though, I really thought, you know, I'm just going to write it for myself. It was really quite devastating. And I thought, I don't want to live a life where I'm not writing. But I don't, but have, getting those rejections and criticisms were, made it so I didn't want to write. And I was also always thinking about other people when I was writing See, and what they were going to say. You know, say. it's funny, I've just written this book called Fearless Writing, right, which exactly. is, it, it'll be coming out in May, and it deals with that central question. Right. How do you write without ever... Right. thinking about what other people think about your work and this was your central question right. and it really and so it, it and it disabled your for the right. temp, temporarily really your fiction writing yeah. career and you know it, it, I also took around the same time I was taking a poetry class I took a few poetry classes at the UW one by a wonderful woman named Jan Wallace who was a wonderful teacher very encouraging and um, just had a great way of bringing words out of you. And then I took another from a, a, a professor there at the UW, and it, the class was extremely negative. And in terms there, of everybody the was picked, session. Yeah, and I yeah. think everybody was encouraged to kind of gang up on each other and rip each other apart. And I just thought, for me, it was just devastating. It was not uh, a good method for my personality. And I think one thing that really helped me in the, being an academic in the end was um, that, you know, I had to teach classes where at the end of every quarter, students would evaluate me. And sometimes they don't say very nice things. Right, right. And sometimes they say extremely nice things. And what I discovered after a few years is you can't take the criticism or the praise to heart. You have to set that aside because running after praise is just as bad as running from criticism. Yes, you know? so it's you the kind same of, and thing. Exactly, it really, exactly. Yeah, and, it and I think for me, that was a moment where I was like, okay, and I really, started gaining courage and I think strength kind of in my writing just by doing the academic writing because that too for me was a very creative process yeah. and um, as my first article came out it came out in a, in a big journal in my field and for me that was the biggest boost of confidence probably and it was you know I, I was in my 30s by then and and I wish I'd gotten that earlier on because but what I found was that it didn't matter how many people read the article before I, I sent it off to the publisher. Everybody had something different to say. That's right. And they came back with that article, and one guy had like 
I don't know, five, ten pages, single space criticisms, right? But they were all very, I didn't take it personally the way I did with fiction. Yeah. I took it, and maybe because of that experience of being evaluated by students as well, that I just, I looked at it like, okay, these people want to help me. If someone's going to give me right. this kind of feedback that was very targeted and very smart, uh, I'm going to do everything they say. And I did, I followed it, and the, the reviewer who'd given me that uh, feedback when he got the revised version, he sent me a note, or he's through the editor, saying, I did not think this person would be able to do this. Wow. But they met every, every wow. criticism. So, so that was all part of that process, I think, of learning how to, how to take feedback, and on the other hand, how to kind of set it aside. You know, I've been thinking about this. The issue of feedback for the writer's big, because you get it, and of course you get it in the form of editorial, and then you will get it, you will be getting it soon in terms of reviews and mm -hmm. Amazon and people just mm -hmm. telling you about And I think it's critical for an author, someone who sells, to say there's a difference between me and that, that right. book. And, and also you will find, once your fans start talking to you about the book, that what they wrote, what they read and what you wrote are not the same thing. <laughs> oh, that, that has already happened with some has it? It's yeah. been really interesting. Well, and it's made me go back and think, well, why did I put that in the story and what did I mean by that? And um, so I've uncovered some, some parts of the story that I didn't really realize I'd written. Yeah. But, I, but I, I think I did in a, in a yeah. kind of a subconscious way. I really, there's a reason those things are in there and there's a reason some people have read them the way they have. So well, it was interesting. You have children, yeah. I have one. <laughs> one child, you have a child, I have children. Yes. And um, you know, you raise the children, you love them, you've given birth. Mm -hmm. literally brought through mm -hmm. your body and yet that little tyke is going to go off and live their own life and your books are strangely the same yeah, way I think. That's what they say. They, yeah. go, they really go off and have their own life. Yeah, yeah and I'm kind of hitting that point now with this one where I kind of feel like okay I can, I, I don't have to try to control this anymore or control the reception or, or promote promotion you know I can just wait and see you know as as people the, uh, in the demographic you know the age group right. that I'm writing for as those people begin to read it um, you know that that's when I'll know. But you know it's interesting you started out not knowing how to work with people's mm -hmm. with people, and, and in the end working with people is what taught you how to write. I know. You can't take it personally. Right that's what and I that's, found. That's a cliche but you really. You can't. You can't. There's you and there's a the work. Well there's something that that flipped for me in my academic writing where all of a sudden I understood that people were trying to help me. Yeah, they, they weren't are. trying to tear me down. And I think that was the key and that yeah. if I could if I could take criticism, you know, and, but you have to be careful who you open yourself up to, I would say at yes. the same time. Yes. Some people will don't yeah. know how to help. Yeah. Really. And and I think in your especially in your own like personal entourage, I think you that be very very careful. I remember giving a copy of my manuscript to somebody who didn't ever read it and 6 months later was like, you know, it was it, it really created a, a negative kind of feeling with someone I really cared for. So. Yeah, I, the people <laughs> <Be careful. laughs> don't. The thing is, I, I tell people who I know, it's like you may love me and that's wonderful, but that doesn't mean you're going to like what I right. write. Right. Exactly. Well, and that's true too. It just isn't. That's not required. Yeah. And, and that's the thing too is you have to have in mind. For me, when I write, I find that it helps me to have an ideal reader. Like, who am I actually writing this that's, for? That's right. You know. So my son wasn't easy. I thought, here's my son who has this incredible vocabulary. He's very insightful, but it's really hard to get him to read a book. He's not a reader like I was at that age. So I wanted to write a book that I thought he would like, or boys like him would right. like in particular. Well, Sandra, I have one more question for you. Uh, yes. And what I'd like you to do is finish this sentence. If writing has taught me anything, it's taught me. The, the value of hard work. The value of hard Were you really not a hard worker before you uh, wrote well, this book? I think maybe it's not the value of hard work. Maybe it's more not giving up. Yeah, perseverance. I think that's it. It's I a think kind of hard not work. Giving but it's, up. Yeah. it's different because I did always work hard, but I think when it came to stories or novels that I was working on, I didn't understand that a first draft wasn't it. Uh, and I didn't understand that revising doesn't mean just pulling out a couple words. <laughs> it means right? like you might yeah. not use anything from the first draft really yes. except for a few scenes, you know, yeah. that you rewrite re 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 entirely. So I would say, yes, not giving up. I think that's, for, for me, that's really it, is just not giving up, not letting, and always thinking, you will not be the last person to say no to me. <laughs> If that makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to give another person a shot to say no to me, you know, we'll just, so. Mm -hmm.